Our next unit is about groundwater, which is literally just water that's found underground. To start us off, do a little review of the water cycle, right? So here we have the ocean or something like that down over here. When water turns into water vapor or gas, that's evaporation, and then it will condense into a cloud, precipitate. Here we have some runoff. All right, when we have evaporation from trees, you remember that's called evapotranspiration or transpiration. Again, we'll end in condensation, go down to precipitate. And then the one that we're going to focus on here is the movement of groundwater or groundwater in general. All right, a definition of groundwater. Groundwater is just water that fills and moves through spaces in rocks and sediments that's found underneath the ground. It is a really important source of our fresh water. All right, versus an aquifer. An aquifer is a body of rock or sediments where water can flow and be stored. So the flow of water depends on two things. It depends on porosity and permeability. All right, porosity. So you can kind of tell something about the word based on its root. Here you have this pore. All right, pore spaces or pores are just tiny holes. So porosity is the amount of spaces in between sediments. So all these little purple spaces are pore spaces. All right, and the amount of spaces this body of rock has is its porosity. So porosity depends on three things. It depends on the size of the sediments, so how big or small they are. The shapes of the sediments, circles, squares, are they all circles, are they all squares? Sorting of sediments, are the circles and squares next to each other, or are there lots of little pockets and holes and pore spaces in the rock? All right, again, permeability. We're going to break down the word a little bit. Here you have perm. So think permit, like a learner's permit allows you to drive when there's an adult in the car. So permeability is kind of like allowing water to pass through rock. So permeability is the time it takes for water to flow through the rock. And this depends on two things, whether or not the pore spaces are connected, which we have here, pore spaces are connected, and then how large they are. So there's a large pore space here, but a really small pore space here. So if there's lots of connected pore spaces and they're all really big, it's going to have a lot of permeability because a lot of water is going to be able to get through. So water will just kind of wee travel through the rock and you'll end up timing how long it takes.